what is it about hunting that gets us hooked? Why do we keep thinking about it and wanting to go back for more? Well, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and in my last recent videos, like with my dad and my brother, one major reason is because of the bonding experiences that you can have and the memories you can make with close family members and friends. Uh, but there's another reason that I wanted to talk about in this video, and it's this complex and powerful neurochemical that's driving our pursuit. And then I wanted to talk about how my recent frustrating and discouraging coyote hunt may have actually been good for my mental health and my continued passion for hunting. So if you can't find the words to explain to your significant other why you're always thinking about and wanting to go hunting, they say you're obsessed with it, well, stick around and I'm going to tell you one big reason why. Okay guys, I'm going to show you some video clips from a neuroscientist and professor at Stanford University named Andrew Huberman. But before I do, I wanted to share with you guys some of my background. So I'm a family nurse practitioner, and I actually have a special certification to treat patients with addiction. So understanding neurochemistry actually helps me to understand what is going on in addiction and why they have gotten to the place they are before they seek help from me. And addiction is heavily influenced by a neurochemical named dopamine, and it's associated with pursuit, pleasure, and reward. And so whatever substance this patient might be using of their addiction, it actually changes the patient's dopamine baseline and decreases dopamine receptors. The elevated amounts of dopamine from the substance causes so much change from baseline that they actually don't even experience the pleasure and reward sensation anymore. It's mainly just being used to prevent the painful negative withdrawal effects associated with the absence of the substance. So these brain changes from addiction are commonly associated with decrease in what is called executive function, which includes things like planning ahead, meeting goals, having self-control, following directions, and staying focused. So now let's check out this video from Andrew Huberman when he starts out talking about the, the things like substances and, and how those cause such a rise in dopamine that the actual effect of that is that it drops you severely after the substance is left and it changes your baseline to a new place that is unhealthy. But we're going to talk about why hunting and even discouraging hunts are actually a good thing. So certain things like cocaine, amphetamine, I will put in the classification of bad, I'm willing to do that. And other things are part of life, food, exercise, if that evokes your dopamine. How are we supposed to engage with these dopamine evoking activities in ways that are healthy and beneficial for us? How do we achieve these peaks, which are so central to our well-being and experience of life without dropping our baseline? And the key lies in intermittent release of dopamine. The real key is to not expect or chase high levels of dopamine release every time we engage in these activities. Intermittent reward schedules are the central schedule by which casinos keep you gambling, the central schedule by which elusive partners or potential partners keep you texting and pursuing, on either side of the relationship. Intermittent schedules are the way that the internet and social media and all highly engaging activities keep you motivated and pursuing. And we can take this back to our evolutionary adaptive scenario where you are out there looking for water, looking for food. Not every trail, not every pursuit, not every hunch about where the animals will be, where the food will be, where the berries will be. Not every single one of those played out. All right, so Andrew Huberman is talking about this idea of intermittent reward schedules or intermittent dopamine release, meaning 
It's not every single time. So when we go out hunting, we don't always have our successful hunt. And this is actually what is driving us and motivating us to uh, go and go and just keep thinking about it. And sometimes we get our successful hunt and sometimes we get that dopamine release in large amounts and smaller amounts. Even there's dopamine release like in the video, I'm gonna show the hunt that I had this past weekend where I'm excited the coyotes are coming in and then there's an unsuccessful reward at the end of it. And I'm gonna let Andrew talk a little bit more about this and then we're gonna get into the hunt from last weekend that was probably my most frustrating coyote hunt. There's something called dopamine reward prediction error. When we expect something to happen, we are highly motivated to pursue it. If it happens, great, we get the reward. The reward comes in various chemical forms, including dopamine. And we are more likely to engage in that behavior again. This is the basis of casino gambling. This is how they keep you going back again and again and again, even though on average, the house really does win. You can transplant that example to any number of different pleasureful activities. If you're not a gambler and that doesn't appeal to you, I have to imagine there's something that appeals to you, something that you do repeatedly because you enjoy it. And almost inevitably, it's because there's an intermittent schedule. There's a intermittent schedule by which dopamine sometimes arrives, sometimes a little bit, sometimes a lot, sometimes a medium amount. Okay, so why is hunting a good activity? Well, the dopamine release can be large, but it's intermittent and you don't get this major spike in dopamine every time you go hunting. You might get little amounts, you might get medium amounts, or you might get major amounts of dopamine release, but it's not a predictable every time experience of large amounts of dopamine, which keeps us hooked, but also is a healthy activity for your mental health. Now I'm gonna talk about and show video clips from my hunt this past weekend. So this first set with my dad, this coyote came in 30 minutes into our set. It was in a far field from us. We spotted it on the other side of a tree line and it came down the tree line. It went past the collar. We lost it, tried some different calls out. It came back into the tree line. It came back and forth around the tree line across from the collar. And my dad got to a point where he's like, hey, let's just both aim at this thing in the tree line when it's got a clearing and let's take a shot. And at the end of the clips, you'll see, I say to my dad, I'm taking my safety off. And then I ask him, are you recording? And then he goes to hit the record button. And as soon as I say, are you recording? The coyote turns around and runs off and it didn't come back in. So we were so frustrated and bummed out about this. But just check out these clips.
be recording. It just moved. All right, guys, this next one is the most frustrating set from the night. We pulled up, got out into this new spot. Everything looked great. We look out into the field scanning before we even start the call and we see something way out there in the field. I turned on a cottontail distress and immediately this starts coming in on a rope and we know it's a coyote. I range it, it's 180 and then it's 140. And my dad is like, you got to stop, you got to bark him, you got to stop him. And then my scope resets. And then as soon as it resets, I see that the coyote and the call are in the picture and I bark and it doesn't stop. And my dad barks and I bark louder and it doesn't stop. And it gets right up on the collar and it smells it and starts to turn. And I just do a countdown, it's moving and it turns and I'm on its chest and I shoot. And I could swear I hear a thump. My dad shoots and we think we hear a thump. So we're like, okay, we got him probably, but it takes off and it runs and runs and runs and we ultimately lose it. And it couldn't have been any better. It was probably a 60 yard shot. I felt so good about the shot, but we don't have any evidence that we even hit the coyote. So this was the most frustrating hunt of the night. Uh, so check this out. As far as everything else goes, this sucker came right in. Everything else was great. And then I just missed. So. Three setting. One, one, two. I think I hit him. I think, yeah. One, one, two. All right, guys, last set I'm going to show you. Again, very frustrating coming up here. Behind us, about 15, 20 minutes in, I spot a coyote with the monocular, and it's coming into the call to a coyote fight noise. It comes all the way from a field behind us down a tree line in the far field on the other side of the tree line and it comes up comes down into the tree line we're all set up thinking it's going to cross over come right down to the collar and then it just keeps going and we lose it a few minutes go by i play some more fight noises and off in the distance two coyotes come in steaming in coming in quick booking and we we're sure that they're going to come right to the call they come down hard into the tree line and then they hold up and then they end up turning around and heading away from us. And then another coyote pops up in the corner and he's howling at us and going nuts to the call. And then the call batteries die and I'm unable to keep calling to these coyotes that are going nuts. And then we just watch them go off into the distance and they never come in. So this was just such a frustrating night. We made five sets, but these are the three sets where we saw coyotes and I'm ready to go back for more, but man, was this frustrating. And uh, I need some redemption though. So we're gonna hit it again here soon, but thank you guys for watching this video. If you've made it all the way to the end here, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the subscribe button on my channel. My goal is to be able to make these videos on a regular basis and keep making better and better content. So it doesn't cost any money. If you could hit the subscribe button, if you want to like the video, if you want to comment, I would love it. Thank you guys for watching.
Charles Taylor. Thank you. 